we are with them. Tristan, we ask you to be with you once again today. Thanking him for his loving kindness and his tender mercies towards each and every one of us. Thanking him for the air that we breathe. Thanking him for life, for goodness, for loving us. Oh no, we did not love him. Also thanking him for the knowledge of this divine vision and revelation that he has passed on to mankind at the end of this world for the saving of our souls. Welcome to the Institute of Divine Metaphysical Research in Corporate. This is a school and it is not a church. Neither are we affiliated to any other religions or scientific organization. This school is founded based on a spiritual or divine vision and revelation given to a man called Dr. Henry Kilpatini in the state of Ohio, the year 1921. In this school, we preach and we teach using the true, correct, original, and only name of the Almighty Heavenly Father, which is Yah, the word of Son, which is Elohim, and the name of the Holy Spirit, which is Yahshua, as contained in the original Hebrew manuscripts. When scripture translators or Bible translators came across the true divine name of the Heavenly Father, which is Yahweh, they wrongly inserted the common title of God. When they came across the true divine holistic title for the word of Son, which is Elohim, they wrongly gave us the common title of God. And when they came across the true name of the Holy Spirit, which is Yahshua, whether manifested in or out of the physical body, they gave us the pagan tragedy of Jesus Christ, Lord and God. Their titles are not named. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5, it states, For though the obedient of all gods, spell with an S, so that there are many of them, whether these gods are in heaven or in the earth, there are lords many and gods many. Each lord must have a name, and each god must have a name also. So the question one should ask oneself, what is the name? Of your creator, seen as Lord and Lord, their titles are not names. In the Greek mythology, there are many gods. There are such gods as Hercules, the god of strength, Venus, the god of love, and Neptune, the sea god. Hercules, Venus, and Neptune are their names, cause of title added up to them. In England, we have a place called the House of Lords. And at the House of Lords, there are such lords as Lord Baltimore, Lord Sewell, Lord Chesterfield, Chesterfield, Baltimore, Sewell, and Chesterfield are their names. Lord is the title that I want to name. Jesus is a name, but it's an erroneous or it's a wrong name. My investigation on your part into a book on a rich dictionary or encyclopedia, you will come across these facts for yourself. That up to this day, the Hebrew language or characters or symbols. There are no characters or symbols in Hebrew. When transliterated letter for letter, sound for sound, symbol for symbol, comes close to or resembles that of the English letter J. There is no J in Hebrew. Now you tell that it's in the Greek alphabet, the Latin alphabet, the Russian alphabet, or the German alphabet, especially around the time of the same world. A further minor investigation on the law into the letter J when you read that a letter J came into the world for the first time within the 17th century, 17, 18, 19, 20, which gave the letter J some 400 years 
in this total existence of unreasonable bearing in mind the true Savior in the world, who we are taught is Jesus, who wore this third plate 2,000 years ago, and the letter Jews only 400 years. So if you take the 400 from the 2,000, you get 1,600 years. So it took 1,600 1, years, or 1,600 years, after the birth of the actual Messiah. After the fulfillment of his ministry, after his death, burial, and resurrection, and the authority of the Holy Spirit, and the apostles going to preach and teach salvation in his name, it took 1600 years after all those events for you to have the sound of the liturgy or the liturgy of the world. So it was seriously, and still is, impossible for the true name of the Savior of the world to start with the J to be Jesus. Impossible. Likewise, the first man of Yahweh revealed his name to is a man who we call Moses at the burning bush at the backside of Mount Sinai. And that experience Moses had took place 4,000 years ago. And the letter changed only 400 years. And Moses is a born Hebrew, and there is no chain Hebrew for the sound of the letter chain Hebrew. So when you take the 400 from the 4,000, you get 3,600 years. It took 3,600 years after Yahweh revealed his own name to Moses, after Yahweh gave Moses and the children of Israel commanded. She got her own side to honor his holy name. So don't take his name in vain. In other words, do not take his name and not use it. See? It took 3,600 years after all those events for there to be a letter J in the world. And Moses is a Hebrew. The children of Israel is a Hebrew. Hebrew speaking people. No J in their language up to today. So it was impossible for the Creator to introduce himself to Moses and the children of Israel and tell them, tell them that his name is Jehovah. So such names as Jesus, John, Joshua, and Jehovah are impossible renderings of those names. A further investigation into the letter J would be that the letter J was originally the letter I. So in the name Jesus, J E is originally I E. When pronounced, it is pronounced E O L A, which is the name of a Babylonian God. The part S U S in the name Jesus, see, come from Z U S O S, the supreme God of the Greeks. And Christ, which is a title, not from Krishna. The Hindus and I go. So, right within the name of Jesus and the title of Christ, you have a Babylonian God, a Greek God, and an Indian God. Three pagan gods or three pagan or different nationalities. The true correct original and only name of your mind, Heavenly Father, is Yahweh. The name Yahweh comes from the original Hebrew text of Ramadan. Tetra meaning four, one, two, three, four, and Ramadan representing these four characters or symbols in Hebrew, which are your name or thing. The Hebrew language is a continental language, in that you do not use the aid of providence to make the words pronounce to make the words pronounce So as represented by these four characters, it is pronounced Yahweh by the Hebrew speaking people. The Hebrew language is read from right to left, unlike that of the English language that is read from left to right. Where the Hebrew text of Ramadan is transliterated letter to letter, song to song, symbol to symbol. This is the Y, this is an H, this is a W, and this is an H. In order to make the text of Ramadan pronounceable Yahweh in English, as it is pronounced Yahweh by the Hebrew speaking people, 
we as English speaking people, we need the aid of our vowels to make our words pronounceable. And these vowels are A, E, I, O, U, and sometimes Y taking the place of I. Through this divine vision and revelation, and it was revealed in order to know which forward to use and where to place it. That one must go to the first man, Adam, that was thrown out of Virgin Mother Earth, using the old vowel in his name, which is the A, placing it between the Y and the H, to make pronounceable here yeah, the master in portion of our Heavenly Father's name. You are further instructed to go to the fourth woman Eve that was drawn out of the man Adam, using the old vowel in her name, which is the E, placing it between the W and the H to make pronounceable way the feminine portion of our Heavenly Father's name. You are my Heavenly Father, who is super original and only name is Yahweh, is both male and female in principle, right within himself. And we be this offspring, we do testify that this is true. Because right within our physical bodies, whether we be man or woman, we possess both male and female glands called hormones. The male gland or hormone that is in everybody's body is called androgen, symbolized by age. Showing proof that the A is correctly placed between the Y and the H to make pronounceable here yeah, the masculine portion of the Heavenly Father's name. The female gland of woman that is in everybody's body is called estrogen, symbolized by a key, showing proof that the A is correctly placed between the W and the H to make pronounceable way the feminine portion of our Heavenly Father's name. So whether we be man or woman, we possess androgen and estrogen right within us. In a man, there is a greater percentage of androgen and a smaller percentage of estrogen. In a female, there is a greater percentage of estrogen and a smaller percentage of androgen. Testifying to Yahweh, who is both male and female in principle, right within himself. And he has made mankind with that both male and female wounds right within us to depict, to depict himself. Elohim, which is the word of son, is Yahweh's divine pluralistic title. Elohim is the divine title that Yahweh chose himself on line down of Lord and Lord. And in Elohim Hebrew theology, it means Yah. So there is a relationship between Yahweh and Elohim. Yah and Yah. When he told me why it was a so called John Fire poetry, the same in the world when he came into his ministry states, I have come in my father's name. And you receive me now. If another or let another come in his own name, him you will receive. From a natural standpoint, a natural child when it is built into this creation takes on the natural surname of the natural parent. If that parent surname is Smith, Jones, or Lewis, that child automatically is called Smith, Jones, or Lewis. Likewise, the same in the world. He said, I am coming my father's name. So he has come taking on the masculine portion of the heavenly father's name, which is here. So he has to come in here as somebody. Just like you have come taking on the surname G, of your parent. Or father. So he has to take on that surname or that masculine portion which is here. And the rest of his name, which is pronounced sure in Hebrew theology, it means salvation. So his name is Yah, sure. Yah, the short form for Yahweh, but sure meaning salvation. In other words, salvation is written in his name. See, in his name is the purpose to which he came into the world. To save mankind from this name. So his name is Yahshua. See, normally I will not talk this guy. And your Bible, or your Bible translators, did not put the name of Yahshua in the Bible when they were translating it from Hebrew to English. See? 
So we were taught that it is Jesus saying, I am coming my Father's name. So let us be open minded, let us be broad minded, and let us examine to see if it is possible that it is Jesus that is coming in his Father's name. See, as they have taught us. Remember, the man we call Jesus is a Hebrew, and there is no trade Hebrew up to today. Know the sound of the letter J. So right there, we could rule it up. However, we would not. We will examine it thoroughly. See? So they say, it's Jesus saying that I don't come in my father's name. So let us examine who they say Jesus' father is. They told us Jesus' father is to be called Lord. He's to be called Lord. He's to be called Jehovah. Some say Allah, some say Lord. So from that now we could tell if he has come in any one of these names. No, not only is Lord a title, because remember I told you, Lord is a title and not a name. You see? So when we go further and we get the true meaning or the etymology or the original meaning from which the term Lord has come from, we have found out by way of research that Lord has come from Adonai. See? And there is no resemblance with Adonai and Jesus. Lord has come from Baal and it has come from Moloch. There is no resemblance with Jesus, Baal and Moloch. And we'll find that Baal has come from Beelzebub, the prince of demons, that you know to be called Lucifer, the serpent, the dragon, and Satan. So that is where Lord comes from. It has nothing to do with holiness. See, it has to deal with Lucifer himself. But in this life, so that you and I would not recognize it, it will sound good to our ears, but the meaning you have just received. And there's no resemblance between Lord and Jesus to say he has come in his father's name. See? What about God? God is also a title. But when you get go to the root meaning of where the term Lord has come from, Lord was used, it was originally used by the Germans who spell it G-O-T-T, which is God, coming from what they See? Have no holy origin. And the Assyrians borrowed it from the Germans and spell it G-A-W-E. Also, see, no holy origin. And the English borrowed it from the Assyrians and spell it G-O-D. And when you read it from right to left, you see what you get. See? And there's no resemblance with God and Jesus. What about Jehovah? They tell us Jehovah is the creator. And if he comes in his father's name, and his father's name is Jehovah, let us see where this Jehovah has come from. Where it originated. Remember, there is no J in Hebrew. See? So when I look up, and do my research into Jehovah, I found out what they did, the original Hebrew tetragrammaton, when transliterated from Hebrew to English, came out to Y into WH. What they did, they changed the Y into J, and they had J, H, V, H, and they used the vowel part of Adonai. And that's how they made up that thing. See? And when you look into a good on a bridge dictionary or encyclopedia, it will tell you a modern sacred name for God. See Yahweh. So they tell you it's modern, it's not a joke. See? See Yahweh. See? 
and there is no resemblance with Jehovah and Jesus. So we, we examine Allah. You find in Arabic there is no A either. See? And there is no resemblance between Allah and Jesus. Likewise, Buddha and the rest of them. So truly, if it is Yahshua to those who just go away, I am come in my Father's name, and you receive me now. See, the world has not received Yahshua coming in his Father's name, and you receive me now. Say, let another come in his own name, him you will receive. So the world has accepted Jesus and others coming in your own name, on the name that the translators decide to put in the Bible and has rejected Yahshua coming in his father's name. And in Acts 4 12, it tells us, neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven, given among men, whereby we might be saved, saved in the name of Yahshua and Yahshua alone. Now let me turn your attention to this chart. This chart is called the Mosaic chart. And on this chart, the Yahweh, which is pure spirit, is symbolized by a cloud. But Yahweh in his pure spirit says it's not a cloud. We only use this cloud to depict Yahweh and see that the cloud has no discernible shape and form. Just as this orange and flower colored cloud extends through all the edges of this chart, and everything on the chart abides within the orange and flower colored cloud. So to in principle, unlike man, there's everything in the universe. And the sum total of this creation abides within the cloud spirit of the Yahweh. Because Yahweh is the ultimate source. Substance Yahweh is the limits and the bounds of all things. For it is within Yahweh which is pure spirit that we all live and move and have our being. As some of your poets have said, for we are also Yahweh's possible. Yahweh knowing that man could not perceive of him or understand him in his pure spirit faith, who was right within himself to take over his super. In possibly a shape and form, that is having the shape and form of a man, yet without flesh and earth, that he entitled Yahweh Melchan, which is the word of Son. Now the spirit carefully answered for more carefully in Yahweh Melchan. Is he not right? Or he is the original pattern of the universe. It is the Yahweh Elohim. In that same vision to Moses and Dr. Mount Sinai, showed Moses how the Yahweh Elohim instantaneously transformed himself into this people, thoroughly full of tabernacle pattern or sanctuary dilation, which consists of a most holy place, a holy place. And a court from the world. One, two, three compartments, but one tabernacle pattern. We go about in this school to prove that everything in the universe is made and operates and is dictated according to the structure and function of this divine tabernacle pattern. And absolutely nothing escaped the pattern. Yahweh Elohim wants to show Moses. Or we created the heavens and the earth according to this divine tabernacle pattern. And he showed Moses the creation coming out by his side. Yahweh Elohim could only be seen in divine vision. And sometimes accompanied by divine revelation, as was given to the so called John of the Isle of Patmos in the year 1896, in which he wrote to the so called Book of St. John, chapter 1. Beginning at the 14th verse, which states, and the word, Yahweh Elohim, was made in flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and full of truth. In this school, we have 10 primary constitutional aims that have protected the call. One, to help you find a new Yahweh over Elohim as he really is and actually exists. Two, to form a nucleus of the universal particle of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah, without distinction of race or nationality, means, says, or whatever. 
free to investigate and explain spirit law, or show for law of nature and the powers later to man, for to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, compared with religion, psychology, philosophy, and modern practical and occult science. Fifth, the escapade current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Six, to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose, operating through the dispensation and ages. Seven, to discern and avoid being seen by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the child, and Satan, and his demon, operating the mystery of iniquity on him through the dispensation of time. In the earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith, which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. Nine to make known that Yahweh from the beginning or day. There is no other name unto heaven given among them whereby we must be saved, saving in the name of Yahshua the Messiah and Yahshua alone. And ten, to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the new state. Our watch with his peace and our slogan is to speak the truth. Our scripture lesson will be taken from Hebrews, the second chapter. I'll be reading to you from the Holy Name Bible. Continue the Holy Name version of the Old and New Testament, critically compared with ancient authorities and various manuscripts revised by the late evening trainer of the Scripture Research Association, reading to you Hebrews, the second chapter. Therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, least at any time we should let them slip. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just, just recompense of reward, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by Yahshua? And was put and put unto us by them that heard him. Yahweh also bear their witness, both with signs and wonders, and with various miracles and gifts of the Holy Spirit, according to his own will. For unto the angels he had not put in subjection, in subjection the age to come. Whereof we speak. But one in a certain place testified, saying, What is man that thou art man full of him? Or the son of man that thou visited him? Thou madest him a little lower than the angels. Thou promised him with glory and honor, and then they will set him over the works of thy hands. Thou hast put all things in subjection unto his feet, under his feet. For in that he put all things in subjection under him. He let nothing that is not put under him. But now we see not yet all things put under him. But as we but as we see Yahshua become, but we see Yahshua because of the suffering of death, come with glory and honor, having been, having been made for a little while a little lower than the angels, so that by the grace of Yahweh he should taste death for every man. For it became him, for whom are all things, by whom are all things, in bringing many sons 
unto glory to make their salvation perfect through suffering. For both he that sanctified and they who are sanctified are all one. For which cause he is not ashamed to call them brethren, saying, saying, sorry, I will declare thy name unto my unto my brethren. In the midst of the congregation will I sing praise unto thee. And again I will wait for Yahweh. And again, behold, I am the children which Yahweh had given me. For as much as the children are partakers of the flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is, the adversary, and deliver them who through fear of death were all, were all their all their lifetime subject to bondage. For verily, he took not on himself the nature of angels, but he took on him the seed of Abraham. Wherefore, in all things, it behoved him to be made like unto his brethren, that he might become a merciful and a faithful high priest in the things pertaining to Yahweh to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. For in that he himself had suffered, being tempted, he is able to succor them that are tempted. Here in the Hebrews, the fourth chapter. We go to Isaiah 8 of 20. And the prophet Isaiah is saying, To the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, and it because there is no light in there. The Lord from Genesis to Deuteronomy, that's the law. And there are 613 laws in all, not just 10 commandments. The testimonies are the next three of the empire, which I tell you from Joshua to Malachi. But seeing that you have gained the knowledge, she, through these lectures, that there is no chain Hebrew, and that man back there is called Yahshua to Malachi. See, by now you should have retained that amount of knowledge. So we have the law and we have the testimony. The law being the first five books of the Bible, and the testimony, which is the prophets, is still the four books of the Bible. And Yahshua the Messiah is claiming the volume of the book. You see, he said, Hebrews 10, 
chapter, he said, Lo, I come in the volume of a book. See? So he's coming. The Lord and the prophets is talking about him. How he should come to save mankind from their sins. See, when he used to come, how he used to come through the lungs of a woman, you see, all of that, you see, to save mankind from the sins, to die, be buried, and resurrect on the third day, to save mankind from the sins. See, to resurrect the spiritually dead man that walking around physically alive, but yet spiritually dead. See? And that is why in the book, it says, in Adam all die. See? How did they die? They die spiritually. See? See, because Yahweh tells man, Adam, in the day you eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, the day you eat, you're going to die. See? So when and at the end of the truth, he died instantly, spiritually, a spiritual death. See? But he went on to live physically 930 years. See? So that is how all mankind inherited that spiritual death. And we were born, all born into that spiritual death. And that is how the ground was first. You see? See? And that is how man was subject to a physical death. Man had been subject since then to a physical death. So once you're born into the world of a physical body, Regardless of who you are, you're going to die. You're going to return back to the ground from which you came. Because that was written from the inception of man because of the death of Adam. See? When we die, we die spiritually in him. So that is why this sensitization, Yahshua Messiah, for me, and died to resurrect the spiritually dead man. See? And subject himself to the suffering that he suffered. So when Yahshua Messiah came into his ministry and the multitudes was criticizing him, you go to Matthew 5, 17 and 18, he said, think not that I have come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy it, I come to fulfill it. He said, for verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, not one shot or one tickle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. All does not mean some. See, the day we come judging the creator of the world, see, who is the savior of the world in the body that mankind has reached? So, what mankind behavior and manifestations are today, they are saying, you see, Yahshua Messiah, he did not fulfill all of the law and all of the prophets. He left some back for them to do. So they called him a liar. See? By their words and by their manifestation. He does not have the power to do that. See? The various religious organization and their leaders have the power to tell us to go back and do some of the things that, that, that is in the law that, that is in the prophets. While Yahshua Messiah, and even if you want to call him Jesus, 
because you're not that good in knowledge. Even here now, even if they have him known Jesus, he said, even Jesus, and then under the name Jesus, in your King James and other translations, say that he said he came to fulfill all of the law, not some. He went on the beginning verse, he said, for verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, not one job or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law, till all be fulfilled. See, which is all be fulfilled means, fulfilled means to be completed and bring to an end. So that is what he was doing in his ministry. And so that is why, as I said, you want to know about your creator. Anything about him, you go and you go to the law and you go to the prophecy. And when you examine the things that he did in his lifetime, that is what he was doing, fulfilling all of them, all of the law and all of the prophets. She to bring them in turn to give us salvation through his blood that he shed to redeem all mankind back to himself. So that is why he say, by grace I say, through faith, not of works. What was she talking about? The works of the law. Lest any man not of the works of the law. So we're not under the law, the Mosaic law. Because if we're doing the things under the Mosaic law, we have not accepted the grace or the gift of Yahshua Messiah, which is of faith. See? So we have shown you over previous lectures the principles of the dead, the burial, and the resurrection of the Moses and the children of Israel, and in the prophets, how they came into the wilderness, sorry, how Moses was shown to the, to the, the signs of wonder, of death, burial, resurrection, and the third day, blood, water, spirit, fortune. To those principles and precepts, see, Yahweh had Moses and Aaron to deliver the children of Israel out of Egypt. And they came to the Red Sea by the same principle of blood, water, spirit, water that we've shown you. See? They gathered around Mount Sinai. Yahweh helped them, preached to them, he preached to them, gathered around the mount. See? And one of the things he did, he warned them, Moses to warn the children of Israel, don't touch, don't touch the mount. If they touched the mount, they was going to die. So when, when Moses and the children of Israel were gathered around Mount Sinai, see? They made that first covenant, what we call the Old Testament, dedicated in blood. So they had that covenant of women. And they say, all that Yahweh say, will be do and be obedient. Well, you know what happened. If you go to Bible reader, it's written there that they never obeyed nothing that he gave them. See, none of the laws that he gave them, they never obeyed them. So think about it. See, they never obeyed none of the laws, but he's going he's gonna to return to them and suffer the death of an old cast off and give them back the love when they rebelled against it. He will give them back the same law that they never were obedient to for salvation. That law didn't save them. 
So sometimes you need, you see, to just do some donkey thinking sometimes. See? Just a little more sense sometimes will, will help us. And, and to be honest with you, the horse is a very intelligent creature. See? Even the donkey. See? So he had them, and when he had them gathered and around Mount Sinai, and he made that first covenant with them, which they broke. See, then he had Moses, Aaron, Nehemiah, Nail up and abide you with the seventh day head of Israel along the plateau of the mount. And he transfigured before them. And then he took Moses up into the mount. And there Moses remained for 40 days and 40 nights. In remaining in the mount for 40 days and 40 nights, Yah, that is how Yah will reveal to Moses the creation of the heavens and the earth. In the six days, and how he rested on the seventh. And that's how Moses could write the account of the creation of the heavens and the earth. See? That he received of Yahweh when Yahweh showed him the vision of the creation. Of the heavens and the earth. Then what Yahweh did that is seven days, but remember, he was up in the mount for 40 days. So if we take seven from 40, how much we get? How much days remaining? 33 days. So what was he doing in the mount for 33 days? For that 33 days he was in the mount, Yahweh was showing him the building of the tabernacle, its entire construction. See, how to build it. He showed him the aeronautic priesthood. He also showed him the garments that the priests have to wear, how it is to be constructed, both the high priest and the low priest. He showed them, showed Moses how the priesthood have to function in this physical or worldly or earthly tabernacle. What vessels they have to, to use, what is the functions, and he also showed them, showed Moses, where to select the priesthood from. See? So we're going to get into that. And we start with Exodus in the law, the 20th chapter. And Yahweh is speaking to Moses in that vision, in the mount, and he's saying, And take thou unto thee Aaron, thy brother, and his sons with him, from among the children of Israel, that they may minister unto me in the priest's office. So he's selecting his priests. See, this is no religious organization back there under the law selecting a priest. This is Yahweh the Creator Himself selecting a priest and creating His priesthood. See, not now, not no organization. See, no. and. And the take thou unto the Aaron. So Aaron is Moses' brother, for those who may not know. See? So Yahweh is telling him, take your brother Aaron. 
See? And his two sons. So his two sons are going to be Moses. Moses is going to be the uncle. To put it for you to understand. So this priesthood coming out, and the head of the priesthood is going to be Moses' family. Aaron is going to be the high priest. It is two sons, who is Nader and Abihu. Is going to be Eliezer is going to be an Itamar. Aaron's two sons. They're going to be. She Aaron's two sons is going to be two low priests. Eliezer and Itamar also going to be. Aaron's son is going to be what? Low priest. And you say when you, you, you select them, see, and thou shalt make a holy garment for Aaron, thy brother, of glory and of beauty. See? This, era, this garment is for glory and for beauty. For glory and for beauty. And thou shalt speak unto all that are wise hearted, whom I will have filled with the spirit of wisdom, that they may make Aaron's garment to consecrate him, that he may minister unto me in the priest's office. And these are the garments which they shall make a breastplate and an ephod and a robe and a broad coat, a mitre and a girdle, and they shall make holy garments for Aaron, thy brother, and his sons, that he may minister unto me in the priest's office. So this is the garment, see, that Aaron, the high priest, had to wear. See, you don't see nobody, they say they're all in the Bible. You don't see no priest after the order of religion wearing these garments. See? See, Yahweh did make religion, you see. So you, for purpose of, the, of time, you will continue to read Exodus 20 chapter. See? They shall take gold and blue and purple and scarlet and fine linen. And he shall make the ephod of gold, of blue and purple, of scarlet and fine fine linen with cunning gold. And it have, shall have two shoulders. Shoulder pieces they are joined at the two edges they are. And so they shall be joined together. See, and the curious girdle of the ephod, which is upon it, shall be of the same according to the work thereof, even of gold and blue and purple and scarlet and fine, fine linen. See? So we will continue reading that. We'll go to Exodus 29 and 1. So you could read down the 20th chapter for your homework. 
to see what the priests had to wear, the high priest. See? She was trying out. That he were a my tire. You see, with the engravings on his head, she holding this onto your. You see, and this is the thing that thou shalt do unto them, to follow them, to minister unto me in the priest's office. Take one young bullock and two round without blemish and unleavened bread, and cakes, and on cakes unleavened, tempered with oil. Of wheaten flour shall thou make them, and thou shalt put them into one basket, and bring them in the basket with the bullock, with the bullock, and the two rounds, two rounds. And Aaron and his sons, thou shalt bring unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, and thou shalt wash them with water, and thou shalt take the garments and put upon Aaron the coat and the robe of the ephod and the ephods and the breastplate, and gird them with the previous burden of the ephod. And thou shalt put the mitre upon his head, and put the holy crown upon the mitre, which is the crown that says holiness unto Yahweh. And thou shalt take the anointing oil and pour it upon his head, and anoint him. And thou shalt bring his sons and put coats upon them, and thou shalt gird them with girdles, with girdles, Aaron and his sons, and put the bonnets on them. And the priest's office shall be theirs for a perpetual statute, which is mean a continuous law. And thou shalt consecrate Aaron and his sons. So the word going to tell you about the consecration of Aaron and his sons. Now we got Numbers 2 chapter, and we begin at 11 verse. Now, we just read how oh, Yahweh yeah, anoint, anoint, anoint Aaron 
Aaron and his sons into the priesthood. She read Numbers into the third chapter. Send them before Aaron, the priest, that they might minister unto him. So he's going to take the Levites to into the priesthood. But something happened before that. See, what has happened is when now we set up the priesthood, he was very clear. So he's choosing the Levites now to work in the tabernacle. Yahweh used to kill them. 
See, it can be according to your ambition and your desire. Numbers three seventeen. Started with seventeen. And these are the sons of Levi by their names Cushan, Quat, Mirai, I may not be so good at these pronunciations. See, it's not my name you talk. And these are the sons of Goshen by their families Libna, Shemer, and the sons of Kuat by their family families Amram and Issachar, Hebron. Suel, and these are the sons of Merai by their families. Malai and Mushai, these are the families of the Levites according to the house of their fathers. Of Goshen was the families, the family of the Lebanites, and the family of Shemites. These are the families of the Goshenites. These were the number of them according to the number of their males. From the month, from a month old, and upwards, even those that are numbered of them were seven thousand and five hundred, that is seventy five hundred. So he's numbering them. Numbers the fourth chapter. And Yahweh spake unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying, Take the sum of the sons of Korah from among the sons of Levi after their families, by the house of their family, their fathers. From fifty years old and upwards, even unto fifty years old. All that enter into the host to do the work of the tabernacle of the congregation. This shall be the service of the Son of God in the tabernacle of the congregation about the most holy things. And the one the Lamb sitteth towards when the, the when 
Roberts that we went to camp, set it forward. Aaron shall come and his sons, and they shall take down the covering veil and cover the ark of the testimony with it, and shall put you on the covering of badger skin, and shall spread over it a cloth woolly of blue, and shall put in the steel gear. And upon the table of showbread, you shall spread a cloth of blue, and put you on the dishes, and the spoons, and the bowls, and the covers, to cover with oil. And the continual bread shall be thereon, and it shall spread upon them a cloth of scarlet, and then a cloth of and covering, it shall spread upon them a cloth of scarlet, and cover the same with a covering of bass skin, and shall put the staves thereof, and they shall take, take a cloth of blue, and cover the candlestick of, of the lights, and his lamps, and his stones, and his snuff dishes, and of the oil vessels thereof, wherein they shall minister unto it. And they shall put it, and all the vessels thereof, within a covering of the skin, and shall put it upon the bar. And upon the golden altar they shall spread a cloth of blue, and cover it with a covering of badger skin, and shall put the stage thereof. And they shall take all the instruments of the ministry, wherewith they minister in the sanctuary, and put them in a cloth of blue, and cover them with the covering of badger skin. And shall put them on the ground. And they shall take away the ashes and spread a purple cord thereon. And they shall put upon it all the vessels thereof, wherewith the minister, wherewith the minister about it, even the censers, the flesh hooks the shovels, the basins, and all the vessels of the world. And they shall spread upon it a covering of badger skins, and put it, and put to the stage of it. And when Aaron and his sons have made an end of covering the sanctuary, and all the vessels of the sanctuary, as, as the camp is to set forward, after that the sons of Koel shall come to bear him, they shall not touch any holy thing, lest they die. These things are the burdens of the courts in the tabernacle of the congregation. So the function of the courts in the tabernacle they had to bear the vessels. All the vessels in the tabernacle, everyone they to bear it. In other words, they had to carry it. See? And they would be crying those vessels on their shoulders. So those staves, you see, it's like rods. You see? See? And they would bear it on the shoulder. So you have two. So two men will be carrying it. One in front and one behind. All the vessels, but they have to be covered. Who's covering them? Aaron and his sons. See? The priests 
officiating priest is the governor. The courts have the parameter, but they are not to see the ever see these vessels. They're not to see them. That is why Aaron and his sons have to cover them so that nobody else is to see those vessels. Only the high priest and the two low priests. So they, yes, they carry them, but yet Aaron and them have to cover them. She with the badge of skin, she and the daughter of purple, they have to cover them. They are not to see it. If they see it, they're going to die. They cannot physically touch it. None of the vessels, or they're going to die. That's the function. Everybody had the function. Let's go to Numbers to 8 chapter. Take the 17 verse. And Yahweh is saying to Moses, For all the firstborn of the children of Israel are mine, both man and beast. On the day that I smote every firstborn in the land of Egypt, I sanctified them for myself. So that is why you have to have a knowledge of what took place with Moses and the children of Israel in the land of Egypt. So you must understand this migratory pattern because it plays itself out throughout the entire scriptures or your Bible. So it's important to get a profound knowledge of the migration of the children of Israel. So when he killed out the firstborn, when Yahweh killed the firstborn of Pharaoh and his people down here in Egypt, he simultaneously sanctified the firstborn of the Israelites. So you see, all the firstborn are man, and he keeps saying that. See? Both man and beast. On the day that I saw the firstborn in the land of Egypt, I sanctified them for myself. I have taken the Levites for all the firstborn of the children of Israel. See this? I have taken the Levites. See, that's why it was made these other Bibles. The Levites.
So we have the sons of Quer given the work of the tabernacle to 
prime aggressors. Now, number 416. And to the office of Eliezer, the son of Aaron, the priest, put in it the oil for the light and the sweet incense and the daily meat offering and the anointing oil and the oversight of all the tabernacle and of all that therein is in the sanctuary, in the vessels thereof. So in Eliezer is given the job to make the anointing oil, to make the incense. He alone is given that. So nobody else should go and make the incense. Nobody else should go and make the anointing oil. See? Now the Gershonites Numbers 4.22 Take the sun, take also the, the sun of the of Goshen, show their houses of their fathers by their families. From 30 years old and upwards until 50 years old, shall thou number them All that entered in to perform the service of the work of the tabernacle of the congregation. This is the service of the families of the Gushanites. To serve and for burdens. They shall bear the curtains of the tabernacle. They have to bear it. And they shall bear the curtains of the tabernacle, and the tabernacle of the congregation is covering the covering of the of the badger skins that is above upon it, and the hanging for the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, and the hanging of the court, and the hanging of the door of the gate of the court which is by the tabernacle and by the altar around the boats 
and their cords and all their instruments of their service, and all that is made from them shall they serve. See? So the question is, is to bear the coverings. duties of Mira. See, and for the sons of Mira, thou shalt number them after their families by the house of their fathers, from thirty years old and upwards, even unto fifty years old, shall thou number them even everyone that entered into the service of the work of the tabernacle of the congregation. And this is a charge of the burden according to all their service in the tabernacle of the congregation. The boards of the tabernacle and the bars thereof and the pillars thereof and the sockets thereof and the pillars of the court round round about and their sockets, and their pins, and their cords, with all their instruments, and with all their servants. And by name ye shall reckon the instruments of the, of the charge of their work. This is the service of the families of Merah, according to all their service in the tabernacle of the congregation. So these are the duties that was given to the different sons of Levi. See, according to the father's laws. That's the first bonds we talked about. So not everybody doing everything. There was what we call specialization and division of labor. So we have the courts, and remember they would supply the vessels on the shoulder in staves. They were not to look at it. They were not to touch it. Starting from the first verse. And thou shalt make an altar to burn incense of shittim wood, shalt thou make it. So this is the altar of incense of shittim wood, shalt thou make it. Yeah. 
एक सुबह शाम की लेंथ जो और एन एक सुबह the breadth thereof. Now cubic is 18 inches. 18 inches is a cubic. So a cubic shall be the length thereof. And a cubic shall be the breadth thereof. Four, your four square shall it be, and two cubic shall be the height your the horns your shall be of the same. So you sell them out of the way of the old sets. And thou shalt overlay it with pure gold, the top thereof, and the sides thereof round about, and the horns thereof, and thou shalt make unto it a crown of gold round about. And two golden rings shall thou make to it under the crown of it. By the two corners thereof, upon the two sides thereof, for it, for it shall go make it, and this shall be for places for the staves to bear with all. So what is happening? The altar of incense. Was laid with four horns. See, it was to be overlaid with gold. And these rings were to be placed, you see, on the two sides here and the two sides there. You see. And the stage was to hold between the rings so that poets and them could bear it on their shoulder. These, this is how these vessels were made with these rings to be born. Or to be carried around. And thou shalt make the staves of shaken wood and overlay them with gold. And thou shalt put it before the veil in the ark of the testimony before the mercy seat. That is over the testimony where I will meet with thee, and Aaron shall burn their own sweet incense every morning. When he dresseth the lambs, he shall burn incense. So this was the altar of incense, and Aaron was the burn sweet incense in it every morning when he comes to dress the lamb, the seven branch holder candles, candles, silver candles, and when he said, clean the lamb, clean the wicks, put fresh oil in it, he used to burn incense in the morning, nine o'clock in the morning. So that is called the Court of Incense. See? And thou shalt put it before the video build up this by the ark of the testimony before the mercy seat. That is over the testimony. Where, where I will meet with thee. And 
Aaron shall burn the oil of sweet incense every morning. When he dresses the lamb, he shall burn incense upon it. And when Aaron lighted the lamp at evening, he shall burn incense upon it. A perpetual incense before Yahweh throughout your generation. See? So this is the it is to be burnt, this incense, you see, the altar of incense is to be burnt perpetually to all their generation. They mean only the children of Israel generation. Nobody else, no, no religion. And you shall offer no strange incense thereon, nor burn sacrifice, nor meat offering, neither shall he be a or drink offering thereon. So he's telling Moses to tell him, no, he shall not offer no strange incense. Only the incense that I have given you with the ingredients I have given you, in the proportion that I have given you it, good, according to the mixture I give you, that is the only thing you must burn here. No, he's given them this by a lawyer. So that is how we read. We have Moses' two sons, may have a value when he can go straight to incense, and Yahweh kill them. See? A burden strange incense on his own. See, the question you should ask yourself, all those who burden the different things they burden, who gave them authority to do that? Where did they get it from? Shem say? And some of the things some people burn in, it's not even good for human, human, your nostrils to inhale. See? And this incense was supposed to be a sweet incense, a sweet savor going on the earth. So my question to you, are you not burning strange incense? And if you were under the law, you would have died just like Aaron, two sons. And with these two words I say hallelujah. And this is a very long topic. You see, and we will continue with this as we go along, as the Holy Spirit has led us, or is leading us. See, but I have to read it to you from the Bible, to you to see that you, this is what the Bible is saying. See, that is not according to somebody's ambition, they go and make yourself a priest or religious leader. See, by no sacrifice or ceremony of man, we become to a religious what? Leader, or a priest, or a pastor, see, or whoever you want to call yourself. If Yahweh didn't select you, see, that means you was rejected. If you want to go and do study, you have to come a piece of Yahweh. See, you have to go pay money. See, and go to these seminary schools and whatever it is. See, you were not chosen by Yah. With these two words, I say, Hallelujah. To have a good day and stay safe. We'll continue this topic.